Welcome back to our second study on music using the Liberty Bible Course, which I will give you the information at the end of this video. And if you're listening to it on the audio, you can go to YouTube, my name, and find my videos there. And I'll give you the, the name and address and website. These are excellent books to get and to know and to follow along yourself. And if you send it back to them, they'll correct correct it and they'll give you a nice little certificate that you've done the course. Uh, Liberty Bible Gospel Tracks and their church has done great. This is wonderful work. And another note to, to do before we start off with, you need a King James Bible. Because if you don't have one, you're wrong. As you turn to Colossians 3.16, oh, look at that, 3.16. We did last week, if you find the video, the thing, we did it on um, script, scriptural music, and we did it on Psalms. And we saw that there's a hymn book in your Bible called the Book of Psalms. 150 chapters dedicated to singing to the Lord. I don't know why you... Well, leave it like that. Let's get with Colossians 3.16. It says that we are to teach one another, admonish in Psalms, what we did last week, and hymns, that's what we're going to do today, and spiritual songs. Now, what are hymns? Hymns are the hers and hymns. No. There seems to be an utter confusion now. For hymns used to be understood to be music, appropriate, to play and sung in church, rich, Majestic music and words and sound that glorify God. Music appropriate to be played and sung in church. Rich, majestic music and words and sound that glorify God. And you heard the puke that are in churches today. Makes God sick. You know where that reference is in the Bible? What is sacred music? Sacred music is music set apart in words and sound. That's important. For the worship of the Lord. Well, if you take the beautiful words of Amazing Grace, and you put electric guitars and, and, and drums to it, and you get the feeling in the body boogieing, Well, the words are good. Yeah, but the sound is devilish and worldly. It is interesting to note that as churches have forsaken hymns and sacred music, they have changed the names of their service. Even they seem to realize that some of their music is no longer appropriate to sing in regular church service. So they now call it contemporary service. I even know of churches and seen churches where they call it a concert. And the music that they play for the concerts is not, you know, you got, you know, strings and horns and, and you know, peace and melody. You got electric and you got electric and you got drums. You will notice that this verse says we are to teach and acknowledge one another with hymns. The problem that we run into here is that the church has already been flooded with music that is not hymns or sacred music. So the church has already been infested with a cancer in the music department. 
It's already there. It's not when it's going to happen. It's not if it's going to happen. It's already happened. It's in the present tense. We must get back to the proper standard for the church music. Well, how do we do that? Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25. Hebrews 10 25. To the question, why do we assemble? Hebrews 10.25 says, Not forsaken assembly of ourselves together. Church attendance has always been a problem for people. Because the verse says, We are not to forsake assembly together, as the manner of some is present tense in other words some were not meeting together with the church the verse goes on to tell what the believers are supposed to do when they meet together exhorting one another so much the more as you see the day approaching Exhorting, <clears throat> excuse me, is to stand beside another and urge him or her to pursue a future course of conduct. You're supposed to help each other. You're supposed to uplift, uplift each other. We are to be an aid. We are to be a comfort. Hebrews 3.13 You are to go somehow, some way with prayer to those who don't go to church. You are to encourage them and to excite them to be there. Hebrews 3.13 explains the meaning of the word exhort in relation to the church meeting together. Exhort one another daily. While it is called today, least any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Skipping church once will lead to skipping church twice. We'll skip church three times. We'll squit, squit, yeah, quit church altogether. Ask people who are not in church no more. How did it happen? And it's not something that just happened overnight. It's not, okay, we're not going to go to church no more. For some, it may be they heard the message. But for the normal people, they just miss once. Then they just miss twice. But it is sin. So we are to meet together and expose sin for what it really is. That's why you sit under a preacher or a teacher. So you can have the Bible spelled out to you by God through the Holy Spirit. To touch your heart. You say, well, I can get that through TV and radio. No. Maybe 1%. And it's only going to grow less and less as the days go on. Then you got the foolishness of churches today, I want to add. Well, we'll do it live on the computer so you can stay home. Not forsaken assembly of yourselves together? All right, I understand for shut-ins. But for the others, you're going to give an excuse not to come. Well, gas is so expensive. Yeah, but where else do you go during the week with your car? I'll get back on the thing. We should be on our guard. 
Because the verse tells us that sin is deceitful. It will have the appearance of being acceptable. Well, we're having a family get together on Sunday afternoon. You know, if I just miss church once. Well, Wednesday night, they're having the last part of the movie, purposely. You know, if I just miss church. Well, the pastor said that he's going to preach about this on, on this day, and that really doesn't concern me. So, I'm going to miss out. And you start making more and more excuses, and you're not going. <clears throat> James 1.15 tells us, That when sin is finished, it bringeth forth death. Paul says there are Christians that are asleep. The wages of sin is death. We just saw not being in a church is sin. I'm the kind of person I lean more to the same this home church or house church. But if you've got to be in a body of believers, of like faith, of one Bible, for one purpose to be approved unto God, with Scripture, with a Bible, and with our music, Why has music in the church become so worldly? Exhortation has been replaced by entertainment. Platforms should be renamed stages in many churches. Because they are used for more they are used for more they are used because they are used more for performances than they are for preaching God's word. As churches have laid aside the strong preaching of God's word, they have also laid aside the hymns. 2 Timothy 4, verse 2. There are churches out there where the pulpit is. I don't know what your church calls it. They got all these little colorful lights that are fashioned there. And there's all kinds of worldly activity going out of there. I'm not talking about the pulpit. I'm talking about singing. I'm talking about when you get somebody up there and, you know, uh, they got the microphone. <laughs> Making love to the microphone. And then you get up there, 37 pronouns about yourself, me, myself, and I, and two, one Jesus and one God to make it sound good. You say, Styler, you counted? Yes. Well, I'm not going to listen to the garbage. I'm going to do something else to get my attention going. It's filth. Well, well, we don't have a drum set. We don't have electric guitars. But these churches today play the CDs that do have electric guitars and drums in them. Preach the word. That's gone. And... 99% of the churches today. Be instant in season. Preach that message to what you laid out for, for an outline. Out of season. Well, Pastor, what do I do about this? You tell them what the Bible says what to do. That's where out of season where you don't have an outline. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. And Bible believing, King James Bible believing, God honoring men are long suffering today with the nonsense. And doctrine. 
This study of music is doctrine because we are giving you the book. We are giving you the chapter. And we are giving you the verses. That's doctrine. Scripture. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. That's now. Today. But after their own lust. Shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. It's happened. It's today. And shall be turned unto fables. Churches are now catering to the lust of their people. By forsaking doctrine. Just like the charismatics and the promise keepers have instructed them to do. And giving them entertainment for their flesh lust. Music can be, as we just read, a God honoring, God glorifying. Praising Jesus Christ as your Savior. And yet, it can be also devilish, wicked, worldly, and sinful. Now, I want to check see what we have. This is how much time we got. The next one. All right. Continue on. I have a question for you. I've already spoke about it. Should tape background music be allowed in the church? Now, let me bring this up to date. Should CD background music be allowed in the church? Now you think that CD stands for what? I say it stands for Christ destruction or church destruction. I'm going to give you the scriptures. You got a problem? Go to God. Go to his word. Get down on your knees and pray. But first, plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, 1 John 1, 9. Because you may get down on your knees and you may have your buddy Satan there at your knees putting his arms around and say, That's okay. That's a bad little preacher. He'll go away. You just keep on doing what you want to do and you like it. As Christ stands at the door outside the church knocking, you do know where that is, don't you? Should tape or CD background music be allowed in the church? It has played an important part in the change in the church music today. It's made people lazy. They don't want to learn an instrument. 1 Corinthians 12:18 says that God has set the members in the body as it has pleased him. Those members are the, are the people in the church. There are people that God has put in the church for that church to please God. You better thank God you got somebody who can play a, a piano properly for the Lord to sing. But I've been in churches where there's been no piano player. Now, now listen, we, still, we sang it to the Lord, we blessed the Lord, but it's so much better when you got a piano. I've been in churches where they get with the piano, and it sounds so rotten. Doesn't please God. Makes them sick. Why don't you know where that verse is? Verse 21 of the same chapter says, The eye cannot say unto the hand, 
I have no need of thee. You say, well, why are you quoting that? Because there are people in the church that, listen, you can't say, well, you know, they don't do nothing. I'll tell you what some of them do. They sit there and keep the pew warm so that the fact is when the preacher gets up and preaches his message, he's not preaching to crickets. I was one of those people, you know, you're Sunday morning only, ha, 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 ha. But I'd rather have a Sunday morning only. I had preached a message with only three people in the room. Love to have five, love to have ten, but I thank the Lord for three. It goes on to say, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Verse 22 goes on to say, nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. There are people in your church who are feeble. Don't put them down. Help them. Did we ever see that? What the true message of take. What is the true message of tape background music to the congregation? What is it? Our musicians are not good enough. We need more professional sound. You're not encouraging somebody in that church to learn the piano or learn the flute or learn the trumpet or learn a, the regular guitar for the Lord. Why should I bother? We've got a CD. I can buy the cassette tape. I don't need to bother to practice. You want to tell that to David and Asaph? You do know who Asaph in the Bible is, don't you? We're studying music. You don't know who he is? Shame on you. What if I were to ask you about the entire lineup staff of your baseball or football class? What about I tell you how? Give me the ingredients of chocolate chip brownies. Could you tell me? That is just a slap in the face to the church members. The Bible clearly says that the feeble are necessary, but in practice, the church is bypassing them as not good enough. What will be the next step? I say it makes Christians lazy in the music department. I, I now listen. I can't carry a tune. I can't play a music instrument. But if somebody wants to, somebody has their heart, and God has put into them a talent. It is the most beautiful, wonderful thing. But it's a lot of work, and we are in a lazy America today. If it's not instant, we don't want it. If it's not convenience, I'm not going. The next group to be replaced will be the vocalists. They are the ones who reject the musicians as not professional enough to accompany them. The Bible says in Galatians 6, 7, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. God says in 1 Corinthians 1, 25, 12, 25, The members should have the same care one for another. I, I, you guys, excuse me. I gotta change my glasses here. These new glasses are just not working. I'm not seeing the words. I apologize. I'm trying to read, and I've just been fooling myself. Let me try that again. The Bible says in Galatians six seven, "Be not deceived. God is not marked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap." God says in First Corinthians twelve twenty five. That the members should have the same care one for another. Somebody wants to learn a musical instrument, encourage them. And when they do a flop of a sound, don't go boo! That was hard. They, nice try. The vocalists reject the musicians so they will reap what they have sown, they will also reject themselves. If the musicians are not professional sounding enough, and so are replaced by tape music, or CD, then why not just bring the whole tape with a professional singer on it too? 
Now, I don't know. I don't know if this is in practice anywhere. What are they saying? The pastor gets up there. Okay, folks, we're not doing 245 no more. Sit down. I'm going to put this this praise tape in. And we're going to listen to the first three. You know, matter of fact, you know what? I take that back. I do know where that would practice. That happened in a prison I preached in. There was no singing. They popped the tape in. I'll be darned. And that was the singing. A tape. There are many wannabe vocalists out there who just hide behind the volume of a tape track while they are singing. So why not just replace them too? And it's been in my experience, when you got the CD thing and you put it in there, you turn the music louder than the person can sing. That's an insult. But I guess you're going to progress your way through. Now, it's okay if you're in a car, you pop in a cassette tape or a CD in your car, you're going down the road, you're singing along with it. You're not doing it to, for a performance. You're not doing it to please anybody but God. But still, it's got to be the right music. Doing it by yourself with the wrong music is just as evil as doing it before the whole church. Why not just play your favorite CD of your favorite professional singer? Well, listen, my friend. Isn't that what a lot of people are doing when they go into church? I hope. But today, in this day and age, you probably don't even want to know what's in the tape deck or the CD or the radio station as they're coming to church. I'd be afraid to hear what they're playing. But then what's the difference between that and then we're getting up at, at the pulpit or whatever you want to call it? Now we're doing track 57, track 58, and track 59. And then when you get to heaven, sing before the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, Lord, where's the CD player? We're going to sing ourselves. What? I don't know how to do that. My church has never done that. We've always had a CD. Well, shame, shame on you. Strike up the chorus. Ready? Everyone sing Amazing Grace. Amazing what? Amazing what? What's that? It's a hymn. What about her? No, no, it's a hymn. What's a hymn? It's a hymn of book of, of, of praises of God. What's that? We didn't have those in our church. Shame. All right, so we replace the musicians. We replace the people who want to play a musician for the Lord. We give them an excuse not to play or practice anymore. Now, next, we just take the singer away. And we just play the CD or the tape for the church. What will be the next replacement? You, you mean there's something else? Oh, yeah. See, I've been in churches, too. See, God, you may say, so you've been in a lot of churches. Yeah, because the Lord's called me to preach in this dying, de decaying church age of, of what we're in today. And I've been in churches where they bring this big screen down, and you follow the, bo the bouncing blimp or the glimp or whatever you want to call it. And you don't even open up the hymn, though. You just follow the bouncing ball. Hmm? Power has been out. The Holy Spirit's been gone. Jesus is standing outside the door. You go to the church, not a ball. All right. What will be the next replacement? You say, next replacement? What are you talking about? The pastor. Well, our pastor can't sing. I'm not talking about singing. Because there are also more professional speakers to be found out there. Now let me stop there for a minute. Let me, let me go. This is my own. Oh, I can't go to church today. Well, I'm not going to go to church today. I'll listen to the TV preacher. 
Well, I'll just put a CD in the, in the video report, and I'll listen to that. Or I'll put a CD in the CD player, and I'll listen to this guy. Does it sound familiar? Well, I'll just watch that that hundred club or whatever. I'll just watch these group of people, whoever, and that's my church. How many churches are out there where you can get a CD of the message that the preacher preached? All right, get back on. The pastor, because there are more professional speakers to be found out there. If he, as a spiritual leader, allows the vocalist to snub their musicians and the congregation to snub the vocalist, then he is next on the list. We'll just put a big, oh, what do they call that, these TVs today? HD, is that what they call We'll just put an HD television up there instead. Get you ready for the Antichrist. I said, all right, you got churches out there who are going, who have their messages live on the computer, the screen. You say, well, Brother Stanley, we're watching you on the screen. I don't want this to be a replacement for church. I expect you to be in church Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. He said, well, our church don't have Sunday night and don't have Wednesday night. Then use these videos. Use these videos in your spare time. Use these videos to study the Word of God, to know more. But do not use me as an excuse to not go to church. If you are in a nursing home, use me. If you are unable to get out of your home because of a handicap, use me. Use a live broadcast from a church. But if you can go to Walmart in your bathrobe and buy stupid things that you don't need, you can go to church and put money in the plate. That was extra. One day, churches like that will be getting their sermons on a big screen, either through videos sent to them through a mail service or pipe live via satellite. We are live here from Rome as bishop, whatever. Everyone just touched their, their head against the screen. After all, one of the church... One of the church's biggest expenses is paying the pastor. We got to give a pastor a salary. We got to give a pastor a house. We got to get a pastor a car. But we get five pastor CDs for $9.95 with shipping and handling. That will handle for nine, nine weeks. Maybe ten if it's such a big demand. And then when we're done with those, we can sell those on eBay and get some of our money back as we order nine more for $25.95 with a love bar frame. You say, Stolly, you're foolish. God's called me to be a prophet. After all, one of the church's biggest expenses is paying the pastor. And he may not even be very good at public speaking. So why not get the best for less? For a small monthly fee, why not hear the best that the nation has to offer? Does that sound a little far-fetched? Just wait and see. I got, I'm going to go off limb again here. I hope I have time. Yeah, I got time. Let me ask you a question about this guy on the VIA satellite and get your CD for the whole church and throw the pastor out the door. What are you going to do when you have a hospital? You need a visit from that pastor. Oh, you think you you think he's going to come from wherever he is to come visit you in a hospital room? What about if you or somebody in your family dies? What about if you, oh, 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 wait a minute. 
That's right. I heard say that funerals are going bye-bye. We're having memorial services. So if you get this memorial service CD at a special cost of six ninety nine and a love offering of five eighty eight, we'll give you some holy dirt from Jerusalem and a bunch of bull from this organization that has set up with no pastor in your church. How about we just get rid of the church totally, get rid of the pastor totally, and we'll just bring it to your TV. The Preaching Channel. All preaching all day long. No commercials. Swipe your credit card in the screen. You don't like this preaching? Change the channel to that preaching all day long. Guaranteed not to not to make you angry, mad or that. And don't mind that guy that preaches on the street. No, don't mind those people that come to your door. That's a scary thought. And you know what? That just added, that just added more to my fact with home churches and house churches. We are in a day and age. And don't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. I've got three witnesses that will stand to what I'm saying. Been where I've been. One's going off to glory to make a fourth. It is also no surprise that we are seeing such a rise in popularity to sing children's choruses in church worship services. You say, well, what's wrong with that? What were children choruses? Choruses. I can't say that plural. Chor I'm going to say chorus. Children's chorus designed to do. Add an ES. I can't say it with an ES. Ready? Have a drum roll, please. Da -da -da -da. Oh, can't have drums in church. I'm sorry. To entertain little children in Sunday school to keep their attention and try to teach them some simple Bible truths at the same time. In other words, keep the little kiddies entertained and non-bothersome to the, to the adults. I've seen that too. Where they should have been in a prayer meeting and they're not. Does that tell you anything about the present day caliber of Christianity that today's adults seem to have? 1 Corinthians 3, 1 and 2. See, we're not just working on the adults. We're working on tomorrow's adults. Which tomorrow's adults will raise the next generation of children. And woe be during that time. Let me ask you a question. If this mess, as you turn to 1 Corinthians 3, do you believe this mess is in the churches today? Go through all the lessons of money, uh, everything we've done in this music. Do you believe it's in the church today? Our children are being affected, are not being taught the truth. What are they going to teach the next generation, your great-grandchildren? They're not going to teach them the truth, and they're not going to know any more truth than what they've been taught, so they're going to get even more untrue. And what about your great-great-grandchildren? As you go down the line, there's going to be a day in the church where there will be no truth at all. You don't believe that, you have not read and studied your Bible. You do not know what Paul said. You do not know what the book of Revelation says. You do not know church future. I need to get on. First Corinthians 3, 1 and 2. Very fitting for today's church to sit up and hear. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. You can't handle doctrines of the Bible, because you can't handle the basics of the Bible. 
You couldn't even find Exodus. When I tell you to turn to the second John, you'll ask me what chapter. You don't realize Matthew is written to Jews. Some of you don't even know what Acts 2.38 means. I gotta get going. What is true babies? They cannot do anything for themselves. They have to be entertained or they cry. Today's Christians seem perfectly content to live like a baby. He cries out, I cannot understand those old hymns. I cannot understand that old Bible, the King James Bible. So he finds a church that entertains with worldly music and a watered down translation of the Bible. 1 Corinthians 13 11. When I was a child, I spank as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Sadly, today the church is bringing back the childish toys for the worldly Christians who sit in pews. The answer is to get back to the sacred book that has not changed, the King James Bible, and preach it with power. Then you will not have some people who will, then you will not, then you will have some people who will also love the sacred music and the grand old hymns of faith. It's getting back to the old path that Jeremiah said. Romans 12, 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's not going on in the churches today. Colossians 3, 23, Whatsoever ye do, do it heartily with your heart, all ambition, all anxiety, all, all as to the Lord, and not unto men. Whether ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. 1 Corinthians 10.31 Now we're going to stop there. And that's it. If I ruffle some feathers, get on your knees and get right with God. Because I gave you the scriptures. I am not sorry for anything I said. I will not apologize. I will not recant. Only thing I apologize for is the, the glasses fell in my reading. That I will apologize for. But with the scriptures, the King James Bible, I will not. Sin is sin no matter what face or mask or costume you put on it. It is still sin.